Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Santa's Workshop. Well, this week's video kind of fell through. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to just run you through what all is going on in the shop, explain a few things, and hopefully this will be a good enough video for now. Next week starts my Santa season. So, I want to try and get something done. Don't know when I'll get it out, but hey, we'll keep a, we'll keep at least one video a week coming, whether it's just me sitting there talking to you, me showing you me as Santa, just whatever we can do. But for this one, we have been pro having problems with uh, buying things and people telling us one thing and finding out something completely different. And I'll show you what we're talking about. When we bought this engine, he showed us one of the cylinders had a little knock, knock in it. You can see it right there. Told us it was a crate engine, brand new. It had only been run on the engine stand. It had lots of nice chrome accessories on it. It looked really good. Well, we get it home, we start tearing it down, and what do we find? Another gouge in that cylinder. The cam was completely destroyed. It had at least five lobes down. Some of them looked like somebody taking a grinder to the bottom side of it. So, this engine has been run for quite a while. The piston skirts were wore out. This was not a crate engine. It was not. I mean, we didn't get hurt on it. I mean, it's got a brand new oil pump on it, had a brand new time and chain, but it was, it wasn't what was, what he told me it was. So, we're gonna to have to figure out what we're gonna do that. We decided to put this engine in the flip car for on the T-bucket. That way we'd have a 350 engine and 350 transmission. I was intended to put the uh, 200 metric out of the El Camino in there, but that engine just really isn't stout enough for that. But we went and picked up a transmission for it. This is supposed to be a good run drive transmission. It looked great on the inside. I saw no issues, there's no shavings. Fluid smelled wonderful. So we're going to clean it up, put seals in it, and put it in there. And I'll show you the actual engine we're going to use in the flip car. We have been getting it cleaned up. Getting ready to start honing the cylinders on this. This engine is very, very clean on the inside. It is a one-piece rear main seal. It was a throttle body injected 305. And what we're going to do, we're going to put early style 305 heads on it that are out of a high output, so they're a closed chamber. And we're going to put a higher lift flat tappy cam in it. Now this thing came with the rover cam. And I'm sure you'll ask, why are we not going to use the rover cam? Rover cam is just a stock cam. With the uh, high lift, we can get a little bit of thump into it and make it sound really good. And we'll show you the heads over here. The heads we have are cleaned up real nice. The ones on the left right here are the throttle body injected cam or head, throttle body injection heads. These are the earlier model high output heads. So, we're gonna put the high outputs on there. That way we can use just a regular intake and make a sweet sounding little motor out of it. We are gonna to have to get a new camshaft. So we're gonna get a crank kit, or camshaft, <laughs> crankshaft. So we're gonna get a crank kit out of O'Reilly's more than likely. But let's see if we can get in there. See the scores? on that journal. That is not good. That motor had been recently rebuilt 
And the only thing we can figure is they did not get the oil journals clean before they fired it off. Thus, it scored the crank. Now, Mr. Jim's frame here, I'm going to start sanding it down this next week. And what we're going to do, we're going to pull this out and put it over there on the lift after I get the top side sanded and cleaned up. That way I can get the bottom side done. Then I'll bring it back over here and we will jack it up in the air as high as we can. That way I can paint top and bottom side and get this thing just looking really, really nice. Mr. Jim's transmission, we have got the rear seal put in. I'm going to get a new seal for the tail shaft. The the rubber really wasn't bad, but it was very, very stiff. We got the front seal put in, and I gotta get this thing cleaned up. Shine it up a little bit, make it look good. Got the new uh, modulator on here, and I've got a video showing what I did on the inside. I'll insert that in here, right at this area. All right, everybody, I am trying to get this, uh, transmission ready to go in because I just about got the brackets and everything done. Finally got all the parts that I needed for it and I had to get a torque converter lockout solenoid because the one that was in it was not working. This thing come with the neatest little, uh, let's see if I can get you in frame here. Nice little contraption here. Take the wire, you shove it down in there. Then you just screw this thing in. I hadn't seen one of these before. Boom, you got a connection. That's just neater than all get out. Alrighty. Now then this is gonna go over to here. fitting for that and a fitting for this one over here and I'll be right back yeah I think the next time I order my Santa's t-shirts for me I want to get, be getting some with the pockets in them <coughs> so much easier to put my microphone in Zone. I'm going to flip that up and around. 
keep it away from the kick down cable. Alrighty. Okay, now let's get this filter on. transmission apart, of course, um, our little gasket filter, somebody, whoever done this last, had left the old filter in there as well, and it was blocking one of the ports pretty severely. mistake to made but you always need to be careful because that will run the transmission quickly I believe there's enough flow that it kept it from being run everything looks good there's no shavings in here to speak of we always have a little bit solvent and kind of walk around that seal make sure that it is completely Things looking nice and clean in there.
Now then, <coughs> oh, I just love them when it's uh, junk. Now then, let's get this. Uh, vacuum modulator replaced. All right, vacuum modulator. I have no idea if it's bad or not, but we're at this point. We might as well clean it up and replace it. We've got a B&M modulator that has an adjustable shift point on it. So, once we get the transmission in the vehicle and get it out on the road for a road test, if it feels like the transmission needs to shift a little bit sooner or later, we can just pull the vacuum line off, get a small screwdriver, run it up in there, and change our shift points. It is a little more expensive, but they are always worth it. and clean in there. <laughs> that O-ring literally is snapping apart. Yeah, I think it was time for a new one. All right, as you can see, I got a little bit of transmission fluid all around that. Slips right in there. That's all there is to that. Now then, let's see if I can show you. See right inside, it's still right here. There's a little slot. That's how you adjust your shift points. And what that does when the vacuum gets to a certain point, it it signals your transmission to shift so you can adjust it up or down and make it shift where you want the caballero austin wasn't able to come down this week so i was going to put i had a company reach out to me with but want me to put one of their radiators in and do a video on it that was going to be this week's video well one thing led to another and Somehow or another, a radiator got missed box. So, no, no problems on them. They've been working great with me. It was, it was a fluke. And so, I've got to, I've got to, we're going to give them a good shout out when they send me the radiator. But I want to tell you, this radiator is built. This is one of the nicest radiator setups I have ever seen. Unfortunately, this one won't fit in my car. So, we are going to get that box back up, sent back to them. They've got me another one on the way already. So, hopefully here within the next week or so, we can do the radiator on the radiator video on it. But a shout out to Alloy Works, guys. 
y'all make a very nice product and I can't wait to get it in the car. I went through, plugged up all the vacuum lines. We did some Berryman's on the carburetor, trying to put a new fuel filter in it. Still is not running too good. So I'm bet betting it needs a new set of plugs. But we're talking about factory plugs on this car. This car is a 1979 model. So figure that up. See, 79, 80, so that's 40, 42 year old plugs. 42 year old plug wires. This car only had 79,000 miles on it. So that being said, we will see what we, what we can get it running. If not, we're gonna pull this out and drop the other one in, but let's see what it'll do. Oh, almost. Yeah, it, it's still got a miss, several misses to it, but it ain't gonna take a whole lot to get this thing purring like a kitten. I've got a new set of plugs that we put into the uh, other El Camino motor. I may use those, put those in one day this next week, just to see what it can sound like. But that being said, the old 53, still waiting on some parts for the front end on this thing. Had to steal the tires off to go on back of Mr. J's truck but he should be getting his new tires and wheels in soon. So we gotta paint the wheels before we put them on. So we gotta get that done. I need to get with him and go get some paint for this thing because we are getting close to putting some paint on it. I'm talking like within a week or two. Once I get that paint on there, I am going to put his motor and transmission in here, measure for the drive line, have it made, and it will be, it'll be looking really, really fine. Once we get that done, I'm gonna set that cab on there, make sure our clearances are good, and we're gonna start body work. So I'm excited about this. Mr. J's truck is coming along wonderful. Now, I showed y'all what I had to do with the bolts. I had to put grade eights down there on the bottom. We got the regulars up here on top. Now I did go ahead and buy grade eights for the top as well, but I had some people tell me, you know, well, that's what happens when you strip out a bolt. Well, this bolt, if you look, it did not tighten. The little spacer tube on that bottom of that shock right there, that was still loose and rattling when that, when that nut seized up on that bolt. It was not going no further. I almost did not get that thing off. Don't know what happened. I don't know if the bolt just had a, a spot in the threads or what it was, but that sucker just wasn't, it wasn't going. So we got that situation taken care of. And we are gonna just roll with the flow on that one. Well, I can't think of anything else besides after Santa season, we're gonna get that tea bucket in here. Once that tea bucket's in here, we're gonna do a quick build on it. Um, that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop working on everything else. It just means that and I'll, my attention will probably be focused on getting it done, but I want to get it built within a couple of months. We're going to have the engine transmission ready to go by the time Christmas is over. That way we can make that thing look good, get that frame squared away. I want to weld new brackets on the rear end, get that looking fresh and right. It's going to be a nice little ride. So I can't wait for y'all to see that. But that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all. Thank you for all for uh, hanging with me. 
Can't wait for y'all to see me as Santa. So like, share. Come on, guys. Let's get those subscriptions up. Share that to everybody. Thank you much. See you next time. Santa's Workshop.